By far one of the most interesting things, Tetsu, Tetsu Cabra being the first amphibian definitely feels right here. The sheer fact that this thing is actually more different than the normal frogs like the Paratoes or, you know, the Nitro Toads is actually pretty interesting. It actually sets itself apart because this is one thing Plesioth and Espinaz can't prey on easily, considering the fact they eat both poison and, well, just frogs in general. You might say, oh well, so this, put plus, this puts um, Tetsu Cabra off the menu. No, simply because it would just make it, you know, a much more dangerous, too dangerous to hunt here. Now you might say, because it nests in water rays, this does mean Tetsu Cabra males are much bigger than females. They actually stick around with the kids until they're fully grown, then send them on the way. Which means that, well, Tetsu Cabra parents actually stick around which is actually pretty interesting and pretty cute for a menacing frog here. Now, why is it that they stick around here? Now, the fact that Tetsu Kaba has very, very few predators, in my opinion, um, they get preyed on, obviously, by Elder Dragon level monsters and higher, but in the normal Apex tier, they have very few. They don't have to deal with Rathalos, because I doubt Rathalos would be foolish enough to even try to go into swampy areas. But they possibly have to deal with the likes of Plesioth, Najarala, Nersilla, and Almadron, who will be in the next video. Now, let's we're going to focus mainly on Almadron and Plesioth more than Nersilla and Najarala. But we will include Najarala to make a comparison here. Now, Najar now sorry, now Tetsu Kabra having to deal with these predators, meaning it has to be a very aggressive parent pretty much a very aggressive predator and those jaws being able to pierce and crush is actually pretty devastating now i do think if any predator it has a success of defending itself against it would definitely be plesioth because plesioth doesn't have armor it has a rubbery hide almost and with tetsu Kabra's jaws it's very likely its jaws are more commonly made to counter plesioth and to prey on any small individual monsters that it'll eat and possibly even drag back to tadpole like um sorry tadpole like tetsu cabra or you know it's referred to as its babies in their um still in their infant stage here and bust it open so that the children can eat like in a swarm or panorama fashion tetsu cabra being able to do this actually shows that one its jaws are just capable of wrecking any monster it really comes across and two, it's a very successful predator and probably a successful parent as well. Probably having one of the few highest, um, what you call it, uh, success rates in raising parents than any animal today. And all honestly, I don't know what animal is very successful today. But we actually commonly see that animals that really just live in herds or travel together or have so many offspring have a better success rate than, you know, than some animals all right some birds are actually successful when they nest in areas that really don't have a predator or have very few predators okay and then you have animals like that hunt in packs or you pretty much do the herd method for example elephants should have one of the most successful um parental rates because again their child is surrounded by multiple members unless they stray away from the group this again goes back to Tetsu Cabra and other things like dinosaurs who had multiple children to improve their success rate and were able to defend those children very easily. Meaning Tetsu Cabra probably has a lot more in common with Apex dinosaurs like Displetosaurus, Gorgosaurus, and maybe even the likes of Sorophaganex. So Tetsu Cabra does have a successful birth rate, okay? Now, you, some people might say, considering he has a successful birth rate, why doesn't it just, you know, go out to the sea? Well, here's the thing. It probably isn't the best when it comes to swimming, and it would have to deal with other predators like Plesioth. Now, you might say, but I thought you said it could deal with Plesioth. Yes, it can. In swamps. On land-based areas, I do think Tetsu Cabra can deal with the likes of Plesioth very easily. Or at least very, you know, in a very good and tough skirmish. But again, out in like open water where Plesioth can have the upper hand and drag it like a great white shark. No, nada. No, it just doesn't have that. Now, it's even confirmed that um, Tetsu Cabra actually nests in Arctic regions, which is actually pretty impressive. 
they're able to not only survive these kind of climates, they're able to breed there and possibly even have a subspecies down there. There's no doubt there isn't a subspecies down there because, again, animals that migrate to these kind of climates just have much more going for them. This means it has to deal with the likes of tidal nigerala and zamchios considered it nest in the frozen seaway, seaway, meaning they're their only, well, competition towards each other. Well, I believe Najarala, or at least Tidal Najarala, would be the apex predator amongst them. Zamtrios is very interesting, considering it might actually have a competitional, um, sorry, a predator on predator type of violence with the likes of Tetsukabra. Now, while I do think Zamtrios has the more effective bite, Tetsukabra's bite is not far behind here. And Najarala being able to prey on both of them, considering they're not only amphibious, but it's also teeth and armor are just seemingly impenetrable. By the way, go watch that ecology video, by the way. It's actually pretty interesting. We dive into the armor of Najarala and why it's actually made and so powerful anyway. But it should even be able to, you know, affect, sorry, the Tetsukabra should be able to compete and take on these kind of predators. Now, in Monster Hunter Rise, Tetsukabra is confirmed to exist within that biome. Now, this does mean that it probably has to deal with carnivores and other monsters like Giratotis um, and Almadron. Mainly Almadron in general. Considering it's confirmed that Almadron is known to prey on the likes of Tarantodon. Now, it may have to also find all Tarantodon in Turf Wars... Due to Tarantodon probably coming to eat some of its nestlings or them simply trying to find the same breeding ponds. Now, whoever wins in that turf war, I would actually say it's probably Tetsukabra. Just because of, the, again, those jaws and the way it uses them. It actually is able to leap and pounce at its opponent at an incredible, pretty much incredible speeds as well. I mean, have you seen how fast this frog moves for something as big as it should? And being able to crown a Tarantodon size by being able to use giant boulders and smash into its inflatable gut. I do think it will be able to do that. Pretty much just lift a boulder and then boom. Okay? So being able to do that, it should be able to compete with the likes of Tarantodon and other amphibians or any other predator that comes into its area. But here's the thing here. And I'm going to address this more in my Almadron video. Tetsukabra is still a prey item here, okay? Then you want to say, oh, to Magna Mallow? No, not to Magna Mallow, but to Almadron, okay? Now, while you could say, well, why isn't it a prey to Zamtios? Well, Zamtios would be a predator on predator type of thing. And they would eat each other. That wouldn't mean they're each other's, you know, natural predator. Lions and hyenas kill each other, but they really don't eat each other. While here, in this case, it's a bit more different, all right? Snakes and frogs actually have actually um eat each other. Some snakes can eat toads, while some toads can eat snakes. It's a back and forth kind of thing here. Or better yet, some sharks are able to eat each other. All right, it's like a bull shark and a great white shark, pretty much um trying to eat each other. Okay, they both have the um capability of eating one another. Okay. It'd be predator on predator predation, okay? Like super predation um, against one another. Now, I did address this in my Fulgur Anginat video where he's able to super predate, super predate on other monsters, okay? Now, being able to counter the likes of Tarantodon and again, going further, this would also have to deal with Almadron. Now, why Almadron specifically? Almadron is what I call, and again, I would address this in other videos, the Sorrel Fagonex effect, meaning it's at the top of the top of the food chain, the super predator, above the likes of the Torvosaurus of the desert, which I will count as Anginath. Not from the apex life form, but the sheer fact that it actually is an invasive species, meaning it has a specific prey items it does hunt in certain regions. With the desert-like terrains here, Almadron may actually be able to prey on the likes of Giratotis and Baryov. And it's very likely that it does. In waterways, it also might prey upon the likes of Giratotis again, but this time its prey item prey range extends. 
we see it have turf wars with Bishoten, where it actually predates Bishoten and tries to drown him. This is more than likely going for him to eat Bishoten after, and it's confirmed in concept art that he's supposed to have a turf war with Pteranodon, meaning that its jaws are made to pierce the thick shell of Pteranodon, making him much more dangerous than the likes of an Anjanath. It's very likely it'll also use the crocodile method and hunt any monster that pretty much comes near the watering hole. This will include the likes of thing creatures like Soregios, um, any Diablos foolish enough to come near, or maybe younger Diabloses, because again, adult and female and adult female Diabloses just might be too much for Almadron. It may even hunt, it also hunts Tetsukabra, being able to use the mud and being able to dig up the mud in order to disturb the Tetsukabras, being able to, well, leech on and then well, wrap them up, choke them out, and then, well, feast upon them. Being able to dig up any sleeping Tarantodon or Tetsukabra will put them in the range of being the apex predator of the, well, amphibian species in this region. Tetsukabra having the jaws to deal with them won't even matter because, again, Almadron is so quick and so much more maneuverable. Plus, it might just throw mud or even, again, if Magma Almadron has the same effect here, Magma in its mouth here. This means Tetsukabra is actually in a lot more trouble here because it doesn't have anything that can really counter Almadron and actually nesting might be a much more cautionary tale and it may have to move to different regions in order to well nest there. It's very possible it nests in the Arctic region pretty much getting into turf wars with Lagambi or any um, Tarentodon that's in the area bullying them out in order to eat them. So anyway, this is all I have for you today, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and enjoy the next monster trailer. Peace. Who goes there? A burning question that shakes the air and rings in the ears. Who goes there? A second time, tension rising like the heat and the rocks. But there is no time to answer. For the lord of this domain has risen from the fiery depths, smiling fearlessly, boiling drops gliding down his face. Unfazed by an onslaught of flames, it spreads its own blazing fire in return. As if to deride the pitiful sparks of its insolent prey.